Arts, and I'm an economics professor at Arizona State University. Uh, today we're going to do a short video on trade. Trade is a good thing. And so what we want to do is look at the uh, implications when countries trade with one another and under what conditions is uh, trade a viable option. So I'm going to give a simple example here. I'm going to have two countries, um, the United Kingdom and Portugal, and these two countries are going to make the same product. It's going to be a real simple model. So they make only two products. They make wool and they make wine. And there's no difference in the quality of the two products. So wool in England is exactly the same as wool in Portugal. The same is true for wine. And so what I'm going to do is put up a simple little production possibilities curve showing um, the capability of producing wool and wine in the United Kingdom and the capability in Portugal. So let's do wool and let's do wine. And here we'll put the United Kingdom, and here we'll put Portugal. Now, in the United Kingdom, if a worker spends the full day, an eight-hour day, working in the wool industry, at the end of the time period, some given time period, that worker could produce 60 bales of wool. If, instead of using a worker in the wool industry in the United Kingdom, we put the worker in the wine industry, working full-time in the wine industry, at the end of the given time period, whatever time period we're using here, that worker would produce 30 casks of wine. Now, we don't have any money in these economies, so what we're going to do is price wool and wine in terms of one another. So, what this means is that one cask of wine costs two bales of wool. In other words, if we use a worker here, we're giving up the opportunity to make two bales of wool. We're going to get one cask of wine, but we're giving up the opportunity to make two bales of wool. Let's go over to Portugal and see what's going on over there. In Portugal, if we use a worker full-time in the wool industry, at the end of the given time period, we'd have 40 bales of wool. If we use him in the wine industry, we'd have 40 casks of wine. So in Portugal, one cask equals one bale. Now, any time there's a difference in the relative efficiencies of two countries in the production of these goods, there are gains to be had from trade. So you can see that there's a difference in Portugal. If they make a cask of wine, it only costs them one bale of wool. In the United Kingdom, if they make a cask of wine, they have to give up two bales of wool. So it's more costly in the United Kingdom to make a cask of wine than it is in Portugal. We could do the price of a bale here. One bale is equal to one half cask. So these are the prices. Now, the thing about trade is, well, Look, there are a lot of different ways you can present this. Sometimes you will see this presented as how many hours it takes, how many labor hours it takes to make one bale of wool, how many labor hours it takes to make one cask of wine. Some books will present it that way. Some books will pre present it this way. It doesn't matter. It's the same analysis. Um, <clears throat> so before any trade takes place, if these two countries don't trade, then what it means is that they're limited to consuming whatever it is they can produce. So if we were to draw production possibilities curves, which I would do, I'm going to have to erase something. Let's just make this smaller, 60 and 30. And let's put their production possibilities curve in here. We could put wool up here and wine down here. 
and we can make 30 casks of wine or we could make 60 bales of wool. So there's our production possibilities curve in the United Kingdom. In Portugal, let's just make this smaller, we're 40 and 40. My production possibilities curve over here. Looks like this, wool, wine, and the United Kingdom can produce and consume anywhere on this production possibilities curve. Portugal can produce and consume anywhere on this production possibilities curve. But the thing of it is, with trade, they can actually produce on their production possibilities curve and consume outside of it. They can consume more than they are able to produce. And so what I want to do is illustrate that. And to do that, um, we use this information about the productivity of these two countries to determine, first of all, a trading range. So if these two countries decide to trade, the first thing we have to do is decide who's going to produce wool and who's going to produce wine. And so to do that, we always talk about comparative advantage. Who has the comparative advantage? Well, it's clear that the United Kingdom has the comparative advantage in wool because when they make a bale of wool, it only costs a half a cat. When Portugal makes a bale of wool, it costs them a whole cask. So the United Kingdom has the comparative advantage in wool. Portugal has a comparative advantage in wine. When they make a cask of wine, they only have to give up the opportunity to make one bale. In the United Kingdom, when they make a cask of wine, they give up the option, the opportunity to make two bales. So now we know what the trading range is. The trading range, I'm going to write down here, the trading range for one cask, the most, we've already decided Portugal's going to do wine, the most that the United Kingdom would pay for a cask of Portugal's wine is two bales. And the least that Portugal would sell their wine for is one bale. So the trading range for a cask is going to fall somewhere between two bales and one bale. And then the trading range for a bale, again, the United Kingdom will do the bales of wool. They won't sell it for less than a half a cask. And Portugal won't pay more than a cask because they can have their own wool for a cask. So this is the trading range. So the two countries get together and negotiate and decide on a price. And so let's just make up a price. Let's say the price they decide on is one cask equals one and one half bales. Let's say that's the price they decide on. Well, who benefits from that price? If the price is one cask equals one and a half bales, then one bale equals two-thirds cask. This is the same price. So who benefits from these prices? In fact, both countries benefit. Because a bale of wool, if England sells a bale of wool to Portugal for two-thirds of a cask, well, that's less than it's going to cost Portugal to make it. And in fact, it's more than it's going to cost, cost England to produce it. So both benefit from this price. Sometimes the gains from trade aren't equal, but that doesn't mean that both don't benefit. For example, what if the price had been one cask equals 1.9 bales? Well, they would both benefit, both countries benefit, because it's still in the trading range, Portugal would benefit more than England, so the gains from trade wouldn't be equal, but both would be better off. Okay, so if we say, um, I'm going to use this trading range right here, uh, sorry, this trading price right here, is one cask equals one and a half bales, then what could happen is this. 
The United Kingdom could make 60 bales of wool and trade with Portugal for some wine at this price right here. One bale equal two-thirds of a cask. So 60 bales of wool would yield 40 casks of wine. So what you can see is that the United Kingdom can produce on its production possibilities curve and consume outside of it. Same thing over here in, in Portugal. Portugal makes 40 casks of wine, 40 casks of wine, and they trade with um, the United Kingdom. One cask equals one and a half bales, so they end up with 60 casks, sorry, 60 bales of wool. So they produce on their production possibilities curve and they consume outside of it. Um, and depending on what the, how much they actually trade, this time we've had them trade completely, trade everything away, um, I call this a consumption possibilities curve and this is a production possibilities curve. So you can see that trade is a good thing. Trade benefits both countries. And we'll have more lectures on trade later.